Hey friends, welcome to the video. If you want to start a YouTube channel or if you have already started a YouTube channel and you're at the beginning of your journey, this video is gonna be useful to you. I'm gonna tell you exactly the things that work for me that I applied to this channel that got me started on YouTube. Okay, first things first, I decided to focus on videos that I thought would be really helpful to people. Now, this isn't the only way of doing it, but I think what a lot of people do, they will see the really big YouTubers and forget that these people have been doing this for a very long time and they have built up an audience and become entertainers. So people try and replicate that same kind of feel, but they don't have the audience for it. And, and what happens is, is that people start clicking off your videos because they don't really care about you. They don't really care about me. They just care about the thing that they came here to learn. So what I would recommend is think about the type of information that you want to deliver in that video and make that a priority. And you can slowly phase into your content all of the different bits of your personality. But if you focus on being helpful in the start, it will make life a lot easier. There are various different ways that your content will be discovered on YouTube and the most controllable of these is search. Put it this way, okay, if there is a search term that people are searching for but there are no videos in existence, all you need to do is make that video and those people will click on your video 100% because they're looking for it. Now, unfortunately, YouTube isn't as simple as that because most videos have already been made. So how do you get your videos into search? This is a bigger subject, but in a few sentences, focus on your title. You want that to match what people are searching for and it wants to be very specific. So for example, this is five Instagram tips for photographers, I made that video. Uh, it's not just five Instagram tips because that's a very broad search, lots of people will be searching for it and it will contain lots of competing videos. Five Instagram tips for photography accounts, that's a much narrower term and it's something that I can and did get started in. So start thinking of the video you want to make, then add something to the end of it to make it much more specific. Once you've nailed down your title, make sure your description contains those words as well. Then you just need to make sure that your thumbnail is very clear and explains what's gonna happen in the video very specifically. Don't try and be too clever with all of this, just make it very clear and YouTube should start serving your video to people in the search results. And provided it's good and people are clicking on it, you should start getting views. Now the next point, and this is very important because I've just given you two tips which are basically serving a robot, the algorithm. Now insert your personality where you can because you don't want to just be creating educational content for people and serving your audience. You don't want to be doing that forever. You do want to start working your personality into it because you want people to come back and you want people to get to know you. So something that I did with my videos is I tried to sprinkle in parts of my personality and parts of my day-to-day -day life. I didn't force it and I didn't let it obstruct the main priority of the video, which is to be helpful. But just make sure that you are adding your personality where you can because, you know, that's the unique thing about you and that's what will get people coming back to your channel. Listen to and engage with your audience, particularly in the comment section. So when people leave comments, if you have the time and if you can, comment back. It's a really great way to start building a community and the, the thing is that person who's left a comment is a real human and they're worth getting to know because they've just sat through a whole video of yours and it's a really good thing to listen to that because it's a kind of a good guiding light and a good barometer for you to see where you are on the platform and understand how your content is hitting the audience. Probably the thing that most people get wrong when they start on YouTube is not understanding how patient you have to be, how long it takes not for people to watch your content, but for YouTube to figure out what it is that you're trying to do. Think of it this way, YouTube is probably the biggest video distribution platform on the internet and it is one of the biggest advertisers on the internet. YouTube is only as good as the content on the platform. That is why YouTube is very, very particular about the videos that it shows to people. This would be a little bit like uh, you walking up to you know, a really big venue with a guitar and just saying to the stage manager, hey, can I just go play some songs? They're gonna say no, because I don't know how good you are and I don't want you to make my venue look bad. So the reason why people say pick a niche is because you're building trust within that subject. Let me just give you an example of how long it can take. I once put out a video that got very little views for 200 days, then all of a sudden, it gained tens of thousands of views within a week and thousands and thousands of subscribers. I guess what was happening was YouTube was trying to figure out what this video was about and then it started testing it with individual members of a particular group that it had identified as maybe interested in that subject. Once it was sure that it was a good video, it just dumped it on 
tens of thousands of people. So be patient, keep creating content. And the good thing is, if one of those videos blows up, they will then go back to all your other content and start watching it. That's why it's a really good thing to find a subject and to stick to it to a certain extent. If you're just getting started, it's very difficult to convince the other people in your, in your life that this is something worth pursuing, particularly if you're not getting any views and you're putting hours and hours and hours into this. Now, what I would recommend is just do what you can when you can. If it's not working for a particular video, just stop. I'll give you an example. I've made this video twice already and I've binned both. I got to the edit, I edited it and I binned it. I tried again, I edited it and I binned it. That was a complete waste of time. I should have known when I was recording it that it wasn't working. You can be spending time outside of recording thinking about how you're gonna plan that ahead and that's where you can use that time if you're going on a long drive or if you've gone for a walk or something. You can start planning it and then you can use that valuable free time to kind of execute those ideas. That's what I would recommend, that's what I did. I managed to fit it in in different parts of my life with you know, a full-time job and three kids, it wasn't easy. And I've got to the point where I'm able to make more time for it now. So do what you can when you can. Now we've kind of talked about this, but stick to a niche, but also don't, okay? All of the big YouTube tips videos will say, if something's working, double down on it. Now I would agree with that in principle, but that really depends on what it is that you wanna do. Like for example, for me, I don't want to just smash out one type of content forever. Find your place, find your community, but remember that you don't work for anyone other than yourself on this platform. If you want to do something, do it, because you never know, you might drop a video that's completely different to what you've been doing, and it might just be a big hit. And when you settle on something that you feel is right for you, keep doing that because when it feels good for you, that's all the different factors that, oh, it's getting views, I'm enjoying it, it feels like it flows better. All of those things together kind of amalgamate on this way of doing it feels right to me. That's what you should double down on, not necessarily doing it a way that's working that hurts you. I wouldn't do that. So yeah, stick to a niche and double down on what is working and what is getting views, but make sure you include your own feelings in that whole equation when you're figuring out what's working. Now these next two points, I kind of want to stick together. Be careful of those follow-up videos. When I just said in the last point to double down and follow up videos that are working with similar content. Just be careful with that because what can happen is you can get tunnel vision and you can start making content on a particular subject which will gain subscribers and those subscribers will be expecting the same kind of content. So if you have made 10 videos about random subjects and subject you know, number three, got loads of views uh, and you're like, oh great, I'm getting views, this is cool. So you start making other videos on that subject. Did you stop and think whether you want to continue making content on that subject or were you just chasing the views? Because what can happen is that your audience is being built on that subject and you keep following up videos, you keep building and chasing those views and then you blink three or four months later and you realize your entire YouTube channel is on that one subject that maybe you never stopped to think about whether you wanted to make content on that subject. It just happened to be an idea that you had and you thought that'd be a cool video, might get views. Little did you know that you had just converted your entire audience into people expecting videos on that subject. So be careful with those follow-up videos. So if you make a viral video and it blows up on a particular subject, but you're not gonna talk about that subject again, all of the tens of thousands of subscribers who have subscribed through that video will not click on your other videos because it's not what they wanted, it's not what they signed up for. So this will just harm your channel by giving you a lower click-through rate and it will make YouTube think that those people don't like your content. Now you can't control whether a video blows up or not, but you can control the content that you're putting on your channel. I don't want you to kind of fence in the content that you're making and you know not innovate. But if you have a video that blows up on a subject that you don't want to cover, just understand that that could have a negative impact. This next point here is really just to protect your own mental health. YouTube is difficult, it is very, very fussy, and the way that it gives you information about how your videos are performing can really, really like get to you sometimes. So just remember, every time you post a video, not all videos will be winners, they can't all be your best video, and that doesn't mean the video wasn't good. 
there could have been loads of contributing factors. When a video doesn't perform, don't take it to heart. Just understand that sometimes it doesn't work out. Try and figure out why, because that was time spent and it's a good thing to do to kind of keep track of the time that you're putting into it and figuring out why videos are and aren't performing. But just remember that not all videos will be winners. And then a really good principle to run all the way through your videos is give something before you ask for something in return. I used to, straight up front at the beginning of the video, I used to say, hey, if you like this beginning 10 seconds of my video, subscribe to my channel. When I go back to those videos, I do kind of cringe a little bit because I'm like, hold on a minute, Johnny. Why are you getting them to subscribe? They have only watched seven seconds of your video. What would they be basing their subscription on? Now, maybe they just thought that, you know, that was a cool background and they subscribed to that. I guess that can happen. But just deliver the information, get straight to the point of the video. And then at the very end, you know, ask them to subscribe. And, you know, if you want to, subscribe. I think now by this point in the video, you have enough information to decide whether or not you want more of my videos. So this would be a great time for me to say, hit the subscribe button. At the very beginning, you have no idea who I am or what is uh, what it is I'm going to talk about. So give something before you ask for something in return. I hope you found all these useful. These were the things that I applied to my channel, which really helped me kind of grow on this platform. If you like the video, make sure you like the video. And if you are one of my subscribers, I will see you in the next video. Take care.